okay so today we continue studying uh, the front end of web, uh, web applications um, and uh, we touch a new language which is javascript uh, and uh, why we are making every effort let's say to use uh, python in different contexts uh, so that we use the same language for creating the web server creating uh, the, the the application logic and so on uh, unfortunately we cannot choose the language to use on the front end of, of the web server because there's only one possible choice uh, that is uh, uh, javascript hmm? actually javascript is the the front uh, layer that gives uh, all the interactive functionalities uh, to web applications so everything that uh, is interactive of m or moving on your web page uh, is due to um, JavaScript uh, code and uh, the interaction with the document object model. So we already touched a bit uh, the, the object model, if, even if we didn't call it like that, uh, while using uh, CSS for selecting nodes uh, and uh, the, the, the actual power of the representation of nodes uh, in, uh, in the HTML is uh, uh, evident in, uh, in JavaScript. Okay, so what happens is that uh, we have a new uh, programming language, JavaScript, uh, that is interpreted by the browser. Uh, an HTML page doesn't have any behavior associated with that, uh, except the content and the layout uh, um, of the page, but then would be static huh, with no intelligence with no interaction to give uh, html pages some behavior you need uh, to add inside the browsers an interpreter for a language for a programming language and in this case it would be the javascript programming language why um, why cannot i choose uh, the language because the same language in which i write the application must be installed in every browser of every user that visits uh, our website so actually there's only one language there was one weak attempt by microsoft uh, to introduce uh, they they call it vb script uh, visual basic script uh, a sort of a basic scripting language uh, alternative to javascript but they failed miserably because uh, on the on the web scale uh, if if something is not uh, uh, standard uh, is, is not can not be ado adopted by the others uh, it's uh, it's fair so no no as a limited uh, technology uh, can survive only by one company um, so this uh, uh, every browser today includes uh, and probably is the one, one of the most important components of uh, modern browsers a javascript engine so an interpreter for the javascript language and this job and that will execute code written in javascript uh, downloaded from the server so when you visit a website you are downloading the page of course the html you're downloading the images you're downloading the css the style sheets uh, and you're downloading some piece of javascript shorter or longer depends on the website that uh, code is totally invisible to the server side for the server side, for the Flask, for example, or for Apache web server, that is a simply a file. So it doesn't have any meaning on the server side. Only when this JavaScript code is downloaded into the browser, then the browser starts executing it instruction by instruction. Okay? And so uh, it will be interpreted by the browsers uh, that download your page. Which, if we think about that, is the dream of every creator of viruses or malware because just by going into a website your computer starts executing some code that you just downloaded from that website so it's a, a way to inject say code running code into everybody's computer as long as they visit your website and in fact uh, javascript is uh, run in a very restricted uh, virtual machine they call the, the, the javascript sandbox uh, so that javascript code cannot should not 
except bugs, except security problems, should not uh, be able to see anything in your machine. Should only be able to see the same web page uh, uh, from which it was loaded. If, if you have two, two browser tabs open, the JavaScript in one tab cannot even communicate with the JavaScript on, on the second tab. So there is a strong isolation of what the code uh, can do. Hmm? And you can only download JavaScript from the same web page uh, where, uh, from, sorry, from the same server where you downloaded the, the HTML page. So there are uh, some constraints. So our picture about the general web architecture is a bit more complex than before. We already uh, saw this picture before, it was simpler. L right now we are adding JavaScript with on the server side doesn't mean anything, it's just a file, a just text file. But on the client side will be interpreted here by the JavaScript engine. And you see that there is a connection between the JavaScript engine and the, la the layout engine. The layout engine is what interprets the HTML and the CSS to render the page. This means that through this interface, DOM stands for Document Object Model, and this is actually the API, the programming interface of the, of the page model and layout model of the page. The JavaScript can get information and modify properties for every element of the current page. So uh, if you want to add, modify, change some text or some content of the, of the page, you can do that through this uh, uh, DOM interface, hmm? which is a standard set of interfaces, methods, objects, and so on. What is interesting is that this uh, DOM is a standard. Every browser fights with every other browser over the efficiency and the implementation of their la layout engine on the efficiency and implementation or their JavaScript engine. So there's, especially for proprietary browsers, uh, there's a lot of uh, fight uh, about the internal implementation of these two. But the JavaScript code that is running here sees a standard interface for modifying and reading the content of the web page. So this is good. Every uh, say, uh, in internal optimization can be done insta inside these two engines, but it's invisible, except from the effect on the, on the performance, of course, but it's invisible from the functional point of view to the script that you're writing. Hmm? Your script sees uh, an abstract view of the page uh, represented by the DOM uh, that is or should be independent from the browser. Hmm? So, so every browser should render the page uh, abstractly, abstractly at the high level, at the DOM level, in the same way. But, of course, if you are doing something more advanced, uh, the, different, the browser may differ on the, on the newest implementations, but the general idea is this one. Mm. So, right now, the code is no longer just in the web application, here, on the server side, but we have some code running on the server side, and some code running on the client side here. Next week, we will learn how to make these two applications, a client application and a server application, communicate in some way. Uh, today, we are just dealing with what happens here on the client side. Okay? So we already learned how to build a web application purely on the server side, like we did with, with the exercise up to, up to now. Today, we'll learn how to make an application just on the client side, but the interesting part will be next Thursday when we actually let them communicate. So we add another piece of architecture to this picture here. Okay. Uh, so this is an, another picture We're representing the same, uh, the same thing, more zoomed into the browser. So imagine a web browser that gets a lot of contents and it immediately splits the content from the page content HTML, CSS, and stuff like that, and the JavaScript content. They actually go into different parts of the browser. And the rendering pipeline uh, actually starts from the HTML and shows the content to the user. And the JavaScript just goes to a JavaScript interpreter and may interact in some way with the render page through the DOM hmm, interface again. 
and the, the JavaScript interpreter uh, runs the code inside a very controlled environment. No? It's a called the JavaScript uh, sandbox. Okay, JavaScript is a very uh, old language in web standards. It's not much younger than the web itself. It, itself, it's only three or four years later from the first websites uh, they started developing this language, and it was developed by by accident, probably, or by a, something more than a joke. So the Net Netscape browser, that at the time it was the the, the major, the most popular browser. Uh, the developers of this browser wanted to add some animations, okay, some fancy effects to web pages. And so they invented a very simple language. They called it JavaScript, okay, with a syntax uh, which is, was borrowed, very similar to C. It's very simple, was based on uh, global variables mainly, and we still have the legacy today. Uh, and it was a, a sort of an object oriented language. Then it became more say, formally uh, defined and formally object oriented, but at the beginning it was very simple um, with the non type variables like, like, like Python in some way. So in Python, you have uh, objects that have a type, but the variables that refer to these objects don't have a specific type, don't need to be typed in some way. Uh, the name uh, JavaScript uh, was just a marketing move because at the same time, the Sun Microsystem were, was pushing. The, the language Java, it was the first releases, and so people from that case said, okay, we call the language JavaScript, so that every dollar spent by Sun on promoting Java in some way promotes a name that we are reusing, but actually this language has nothing to do with Java at all, totally. Hmm? Okay, uh, right now the correct name should be not JavaScript, but ECMAScript, uh, nobody calls it that way, uh, but uh, actually because the, the language is standardized by this ECMA association, which is a, one of the many standard associations. It's not a W2C language, it's not an ISO standard, it's an ECMA standard. But so, to make it short, hmm, to, to make a very quick introduction to learning the JavaScript language, just imagine a language with a semantics similar to Python, but the syntax similar to C, meaning that uh, in JavaScript, like in Python, the language is interpreted, so we have an interpreter reading line by line, so we have all the advantages of that, uh, dynamic typing, so the same variable can um, refer to different types, uh, uh, different moments, uh, and uh, any given variable can have a uh, dynamically changing number of properties so in python for example you can always add uh, a property a new method uh, a new uh, property vari uh, vari variable to every object so if you have a variable a you can always say a dot something equal to and you can create new methods new uh, properties at any time the same we don't do it very often because it gets confusing in the code not knowing which attributes are, are defined on which uh, object the same you can do with javascript so it's uh, it's only dynamic typing where every uh, object has a variable number of attributes that you just define and use them hmm? you don't need to declare types you, need, you don't need uh, to declare classes you may declare classes in python also in javascript but you can always use objects without a specific class deriving from them okay so in that in that respect they are quite similar and uh, the, the syntax is similar to c so you have a square uh, you have uh, curly braces you have a for if and while you have uh, declarations of variables before usage uh, even if not uh, even without the type and so on hmm? you have the semicolons uh, instead of uh, Python, which deals a lot with spaces and not with uh, you know, punctuation for, for nesting. So it's a mix of the, of the two, uh, so we can, uh, uh, in some way, uh, be faster in learning that. Uh, so how does uh, the embedding of a JavaScript program into an HTML page works? As always, we have two options. One option is to embed the code 
into the HTML with the script tag. So we have a script a slash script inside JavaScript code. Or, and uh, the better choice is to write the script in an external file and load it uh, into the page uh, with a script element at the beginning or in the header set section like we did with style sheets uh, you can load a script uh, file externally with the attribute source uh, so that we have the html which is clean html and the javascript which is I'm sorry, outsourced in a separate file so we, we always use this way except for maybe minor modifications that sometimes are needed but mainly we will create a separate file there so if we want to try that and do it step by step on our remember our stupid web application uh, we can easily we load the style sheets and so on we can also load the, uh, in the index page uh, some javascript code and uh, for doing that I, i'm creating in the static folder a new file of type javascript i can call it script.js yes i want to add it to the, to the project and in the index page i can just uh, specify that this page contains a script of type uh, javascript here application slash javascript and it's located in and we know right now it's uh, it's taken from the static directory so again static file name equal to sorry equal to script.js okay and then we close the tag that's it so script type application slash javascript source uh, the static script.js file refer a reference and then we cl we close the tag here and that starts loading and executing the script.js that for now is is empty included in index.html index.html i started writing some comments i used the, the c syntax for comments uh, the c plus plus syntax for, for comments okay so how does the um, language look like okay you have some very simple statements like this hmm? and uh, alert is, a, is a, the simplest statement uh, and it's also not very used for uh, um, fortunately but just to show that it works uh, it's useful for debugging an alert just opens a, a pop-up window on the browser and blocks everything until the user clicks OK but it's very useful to see whether the program reaches a given point uh, during the debugging okay so this is just a simple example now if I am loading the HTML page I should see a pop-up before the page loads and let's try it by running the, the application. Opening the browser. And nothing happens. It's there, yes.
here. Doesn't maybe doesn't like the short end for closing. There was a problem in, in older browsers. I so let's reload it. Okay, works. So that was a syntax problem in the script tag. I, the short closing syntax doesn't work. Okay, so at this moment, what, what the browser is doing is that it read the HTML page. We had a script tag in the head section, and that's immediately executed. So the alert instruction is executed around uh, right there before loading the rest of the page. You see that the background is gray. Only if I dismiss this uh, alert window, then I will see the rest of the page. So this is very, in a way, dangerous because the instructions are executed immediately when the browser finds them, even if the page hasn't finished loading. We see a way later to defer the instruction of the JavaScript until the page is completely loaded. Um, but right now we have the proof, uh, we have evidence that the JavaScript is being read and executed by the browser. So what can I do with this language? Okay, right now we can generate a dialog boxes, we can change the page, we can open new windows, we can intercept some events of the user. And after that, we can modify the HTML page as a consequence of the, the user actions. Today, we will see the basic mechanism by which it works. But I'm already putting forward that uh, next Thursday we'll uh, use a, a library which is called jQuery, which makes these kind of uh, actions much, much more efficient to write, much simpler also. Mm -hmm. But first we need to understand the mechanism, the underlying mechanism. Okay, uh, first of all, we have a link uh, for learning JavaScript, uh, so, and uh, always uh, good uh, W3C schools. Uh, there is a there was there's a tutorial eh, where step by step you can go and learn something more about javascript uh, right now i we only give some flashes um i said that the syntax of the language is very similar to c so if uh, for a while uh, all the other control constructs are the same blocks are limited by braces and most operators are the same so we don't actually have to learn anything new it's simpler than c because uh, in for example all the string handling uh, is much simpler in javascript rather than in c because you, uh, they are native objects and uh, variables are different because they are more uh, let's say like the python one so we have uh, no variable types uh, and you have objects uh, instead of just simple um, references but just to have a flash, uh, comments are in the C syntax, C or C++ syntax, also Java. They use all the same syntax for the comments. Variables uh, must be declared, uh, the name of a variable must be declared with the keyword uh, var. Yeah. Uh, actually, if you don't declare a variable, it's not a, an error in the language but the variable uh, becomes global mm. so it's a very dangerous thing if you forget to declare a variable that variable will become a global variable over all your scripts in the page of course inside the sandbox uh, while if you declare a variable that the variable will be scoped inside the function inside the methods inside the scope where the variable is declared Mm -hmm. So it becomes a local variable, which is what you really uh, normally want. So remember to declare, always declare a variable, and uh, unfortunately, if you don't, uh, the, the, the interpreter doesn't flag you an error. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's legal, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, a legacy from, war, from, a time, from all times where all the variables in JavaScript were global. Mm -hmm. 
They were, these are very, very old times, but unfortunately the language still has uh, some strange uh, behaviors. And you will find that in general, JavaScript is very permissive, should they say, should they say. So there's a lot of syntax constructs that are dangerous or should be wrong, but actually are valid in the language. It's the opposite of Python, where if you misplace a space or a colon, then it's a syntax error. So it catches a lot of errors just by the syntax. JavaScript is the opposite. You can run something and it doesn't generate errors, but it, be, it behaves uh, in a wrong way. So it's more responsibility to you in writing clean code because the, the, the interpreter, the compiler, doesn't help you so much. And uh, the same variable, once declared, may refer to different objects, uh, and every object should have its own data type that may be different uh, over type. And JavaScript tries to avoid uh, the burden on you for converting data types. So a lot of conversions are done automatically, which is nice because it saves you typing. It's also dangerous because uh, some conversions are maybe some way unexpected huh? so if you have a plus sign and all operands are numeric uh, then the operation is a sum of numbers if at least one operand is a string uh, then all the operands are converted to strings uh, and this plus becomes uh, concatenation of strings okay so if you have a complex expression in which some variable mm, if you're writing okay if i'm writing Sorry. If I'm writing, uh, uh, let's use alert because we know it, okay? Three plus two, and alert three plus two, what do I get? So in the first case, I should get five. Maybe in the second case, I should get 32 and in the third case uh, does the string uh, become transformed into a number or the number is transformed into a string okay let's see if I load the page I will see 5 3 2 and then Let's see what. So hello, five, okay, three two, and three two again. So in this case, uh, JavaScript decided that the mm, the number is converted into a string, and so this plus means uh, actual st co string concatenation and not uh, number addition. It is easy, but what happens if you are writing var a equals something or three and var b equal to two and you try to do alert uh, a plus b there is no way of knowing what happens here because a b doesn't have a type don't have a type okay you can read the current value but imagine this value comes from a function you call from a, co a complex computation so maybe it's not easy to know beforehand what is the type of a of the object pointed by a or the, or the type of the object pointed by b and so it's mm, difficult to estimate what this operator plus will do at runtime until runtime you don't know there's no way of statically checking checking it okay and in this case, of course, it will uh, be 3, 2 again. So hello, 5, 3, 2, 3, 2, and 3, 2 again for the third time. We know that. Hmm? So uh, it's uh, useful if uh, actually the, the, the interpreter does the, the conversion you are expecting. Hmm? In general, it tries always to convert to the more general type. Okay, we already saw some uh, variable declaration. You can declare a variable or can declare a variable and assign an object of type, of type integer 
to this variable or an object of type string to the variable or make any kind of uh, operation remember that if x is 10 x plus 1 is 11 if x is hello x plus 1 means hello 1 hmm? it becomes concatenation but then you can have any expression the basic types are boolean numbers there's no difference between integer or double they're all numbers uh, that can of, of course contain integer values or contain fractional values but they all go under the number object strings uh, or other types of objects like uh, dates uh, or user defined objects mm -hmm. uh, the operators are what you would expect from C from Java they are the same plus some strange operators like okay concatenation of strings uh, again you could expect that the comparison operators uh, you have uh, the equal equal sign like in C like in Java and then we have a strange equal 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 <laughs> triple equal sign that uh, the difference is that uh, the double equal does all the necessary conversions to try to bring the same objects to the same type and then does the comparison the triple equal does the comparison without trying to match the types so if the objects have different types uh, the triple equal we always consider them different the double equal will try to convert them to a common subtype so a super type and then uh, that do the comparison so for example okay and or not uh, we know those uh, five is a number and five is a string are equal five is a number and five is a number are triple equal because they are identical in value and type but uh, five is a number and five is a string that are double equal are not triple equal okay so this is the difference so let's remember which one to use uh, depending on the context if we want to enforce the type use triple equal if you don't care about the type or just about the value use the normal double equal Control structures, it's what you expect, uh, as you, uh, when I said it's the same as, as in C, if, else, uh, switch, for, while, do while, they are absolutely identical. Okay, so actually no uh, difference between, uh, in syntax between JavaScript and C or C++. The break and continue work in the same way. So there's nothing new to say actually hmm? um, in javascript we have functions remember in python we define a function with def in javascript we define a function with the function but uh, the syntax is similar to c the meaning the semantics is similar to python so we define a function with a keyword which is function not def you don't specify a return type in c you must declare a function like int void char star or so or whatever you must declare the type of return here you don't require you are not declaring it a function may return a value of any type like in python in python you just define def the function without specifying if, if it's returning a string or an object or whatever and the same goes for the parameters you declare the names but not the types function abc parameter a parameter b parameter c you don't say which type if parameter a is an integer or a string or whatever so you use the c syntax you use the python semantics and then you have the code parameters are placed by value or by reference actually if there are objects like in python you may have no parameters of course and uh, you can return from the function or return with a value we just have a re the return statement uh, of any type hmm? you it's a bit dangerous but you the same function might return different types in different points hmm? depending on what happens usually 
you should try to be consistent but the compiler doesn't uh, force you to do that and of course you can call the function when you want uh, just normally by name so nothing special here there are objects uh, in JavaScript you can create your objects or you can use uh, the objects you want uh, you can uh, use the predefined objects from the standard libraries or from some libraries that you are that you load in your document uh, load the library in uh, in JavaScript means including a script file that contains the source of the library so this is different in Python if you want to load the library you do import with the module name okay so the import is actually inside your code and the import makes the Python interpreter go fetch and execute the source code of that module but the import statement is under your control in JavaScript uh, no in JavaScript you have your, fi your file script.js may use some function from other JavaScript files that have been loaded uh, before you by the HTML page so you inside your code you cannot call or load other libraries it's the HTML page that will load all the libraries and finally load your code on which uh, that, or finally load your code that will depend on those libraries so the responsibility of loading the libraries is not inside the page inside the the code here inside the script rather it's inside the page so if I'm using like we are doing okay for, for example there is already a, an example here where for bootstrap we already included the, a library here hmm? and uh, it was in, in this case we are not using it because only uh, it's only for internal usage of um, of bootstrap itself but uh, you see that we first load the library and then we load the script uh, that may use this function so all is in the control of the including html page and what is an object in javascript again it's very similar to um to python an object uh, has a, a set of properties and these properties uh, uh, have a current value so at a given point in time an object may have properties a b c a is one b is hello and c is uh, today's date for example at any time we can add or delete properties from objects even if you usually don't want don't want to do that um, and in some cases properties may be write only properties or maybe read only properties in some cases accessing the property is just done with adopt a dot b syntax and an object may have a set of methods that you can call on it hmm? some function that you can call uh, on the object itself it doesn't have a class so if you are coming from C sharp C++ or Java uh, you would say an object is an instance of a class at the first line here so first you define classes in the classes you define which are the properties which are the methods and then you can cre create objects that actually do give values to the properties and do uh, give implement and have the implementation of the methods not in JavaScript, not in Python. You may have an object without an associated class. Just the object, the instance, the variable ha happens to have these properties with those values and happens to have a method defined. Of course, if you want, you can define classes and then create objects from classes, like in Python, uh, as in JavaScript. Hmm? But it's not uh, mandatory. When an object, once created, may have or gain new properties and this dynamicity is what makes the language very extensible you can add the new information to standard objects the browser creates you a DOM object describing all the content of the HTML page if you want to add some information to some HTML object you can do that you just add a property to an object that is already there 
and this uh, makes some manipulations very convenient uh, about uh, okay creating objects is uh, new with a new keyword resembles c in some way sorry not c c doesn't have a new c plus plus or java um, in, unlike python in python for creating an object you just call the name of the class so you don't use the, the new keyword is not uh, not needed uh, for getting properties from method you use the dot syntax we nothing unexpected for the, the two the most important internal predefined object object type are strings mm -hmm. strings are predefined in the language of course they only have one read only property which is a length you can add new properties but uh, the, the the native one is already there and you have a lot of methods for implementing uh, so the length of the string is just uh, with this prop it's a property it's not a method so you don't need the, the parentheses it's not length uh, open and close parentheses it's just length uh, without the parentheses because the, the value of a property and not a method that you call mm -hmm. and all the others are methods for picking one ch character for concatenating two strings for finding a string abc instead of another string s uh, um, for replacing, uh, um, you can see that these uh, slides were for 2015 when there was the switch, uh, replacing a substring with another string, uh, and uh, um, extracting substrings. Uh, uh, many of these operations in Python are done just by the indexing syntax, okay, for the slicing syntax of, of strings, because in Python strings are lists. Uh, in uh, JavaScript, uh, strings are different types of objects, so you need all these uh, uh, methods uh, for doing all the conversation to uppercase, to lowercase, and so on. And the other you object that may be useful, not so much, so we, d we will skip it. Uh, we will skip the details, are date objects. Again, date is uh, predefined in the language. You can create a new date set to now. You can set the year and the, and the hours, and you can get a different part of the date. So if you, are, if you need to do some date or time arithmetic, which is always bad because date and times are always ugly to, to get and to use, but you have uh, uh, this, all these methods on the date objects. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you can set every, every one of them but as I said, fortunately, we don't use dates very much. There's also an array type, which is somewhat similar to the Python lists or to the Java array list. Hmm? So it's a variable size array. You can define just an array or an array with a given maximum size, and then you can start populating it. As you add new elements, uh, the array will grow automatically. So you cannot add element number 15 at first, but you can start adding 0, 1, 2, 3, and then they will grow. So adding an element at the end is uh, equivalent to what we do with the, an append method in Python that creates a new element at the end. Like if there is no append extraction here, we just uh, use a, an, a new index and that will make uh, space for the new element. Yeah? um it should be a limit i'm not totally sure but it should uh, uh, be the num maximum number of, so if you if you try to go over that uh, you will get an error hmm? but uh, i to be very sure i uh, would need to check the, the manual so and uh, okay these are some just an examples an array arrays of strings uh, you see declare an array put some values into the first three locations and then use them th uh, bra um, iterate through the elements and then print them uh, we are sorry i didn't comment earlier on document.write which is somewhere uh, sometimes appears on the on the um, on the examples document.write just adds the string that you pass as an argument into the html page 
so it's a way of printing something onto the page why I didn't I use it in my examples uh, actually because uh, printing something here in the head section only generates error <laughs> in the page on the in the HTML for if I want to print something that shows up in the page uh, this should be included in the body and so I should include the script uh, into the body probably possibly at the end of the body or just before the end of the body here and then here I can document that write something that will be appended at the end of the page which is by the way a very ugly way of doing stuff because you can only append some raw test, uh, text at the end the good way of modifying the page is going through the DOM so modify adding actually elements to the page uh, and not just uh, uh, appending into some specific uh, part of the page hmm. by the way even if even if I would uh, put the script here it would block the browser before the browser gets to the file uh, to the end of the file so some part of the page uh, will not be initialized by the browser yet because the file is not finished yet and the browser doesn't know how much is there how much text is there after the script so it would be uh, it would not be a solution anyway hmm? so we'll see the, the the right way of doing that later with events okay we have also methods that operate on the array for concatenation for slicing for sorting this is a primitive maybe this might be useful uh, joining uh, conversion among arrays and strings so splitting and joining sequences of uh, of, uh, value, of string values there's a lot of uh, uh, investment here in this language on the strings or manipulating strings because what actually is what uh, the scripts do they have to manage the text uh, on the web page and the web page contains a lot of strings a lot of text uh, that's why this language is very rich with these primitives that are already in the standard library so you don't need to include anything more and then we have a math object for doing mathematics uh, that contains uh, some constants and uh, most of the basic uh, scientific functions that you could need hmm? we don't do a lot of mathematics in our web pages uh, but uh, all the functions are there hmm? uh, these ones could be more useful probably ceiling floor rounding uh, when you get some input from the user you need to compare it with you need to round it to a given number of decim decimal places and so on randomly useful for creating games uh, but nothing more complex okay this uh, was basically the language yet another syntax but we can manage it the interesting part would be the programming model we probably already understood that we cannot think JavaScript as a sequential language because there's no place where you, we, we could write the code that makes sense if I write the code here uh, well the code is run before any of the page is even loaded so it cannot do anything useful to the page well we could it we could put it here when, when the page is almost loaded but almost is not all we could put it here could we no we couldn't actually because at this point the HTML is already closed you, you cannot write anything past the closing HTML tag it would be a mistake this, a, a script tag here would be would be an error in the HTML page so there is no place where this script could be run safely and act on the real content of the page the only thing that the script could do is uh, to define a set of functions that will be called asynchronously when uh, the user will do some actions associated to some user actions 
so um, because no, in the, if I do something here for way I would need I would need to wait for a user to type a number to enter the data you know there, there was a login form here the username what happens if this username is uh, empty for example or, or is too short I would like to block uh, for probably the submit button so where do I write the code for checking the length of this username if I put it here it will be run while the browser is loading the page before the user had a chance to enter his name so it's too soon so we should tell the browser load this page read this JavaScript put it aside remember it and when the user enters something in this text input then execute this function when the user clicks on the submit button then execute this function when the user moves the mouse then execute this function hmm? so basically a script in javascript is a set of function definitions that needs to be attached to some events that happens in the happen in the page and these events will be under control of the user I'm not controlling whether the user clicks on submit before or after entering the username. If it's uh, the user, the same user, first he enters the username and then he clicks the submit. But I cannot be sure. It depends on the user. So that's why this programming model is asynchronous. We don't have the control over the time. We don't have a synchronous sequential execution we may we uh, will have a lot of small fragments of code that are called in a sequence in an order that is unknown until the user actually will use the page will navigate to the page hmm? so how to implement this kind of model first uh, these uh, behavior these actions of the users are represented by an um, an object that is called event by the way this is the same model conceptual model that happens in every user interface so if you ever if you ever program something into c sharp a graphical interface in c sharp or JavaFX, uh, or in android or in ios uh, when you have to deal with the user events the, the model is the same there are objects visible to the user and there are some actions that the user can do on those objects in this case, we are in web, web application, the, the objects are HTML tags, HTML elements. So the user can do something with the HTML, HTML elements shown on the page, may move the mouse, may type some letter, may click somewhere. And all these user actions are events. Each of these actions generates a JavaScript object of type event and uh, i can choose for every type of event generated by every html element i can choose whether a javascript function should be associated for handling the event so most of the events are generated ban and then discarded by the browser okay the user moves the mouse inside the image and then moves the mouse outside the uh, image and then inside again and then outside again and then over the text and then clicks inside the text and then clicks outside i'm doing a lot of clicks and movements all of them are just discarded nobody wants to know about them but uh, <coughs> i made associate with some of these events uh, some action a so-called uh, event handler which is no more than a, any javascript function that will be associated to a specific event uh, generated by a specific html element uh, so in this case the browser 
that knows what the user is doing and knows that okay this image has a an event tender associated to the click event so if the user clicks on the image execute this function this javascript function and then you are executing your code in the right instance of, of, of time when the user did some action for example you may have a, a button in your form you may decide to handle to intercept what happens when the user clicks on that button so you can associate and it's very easy to associate an event handler to to an stm element you have uh, an on event event name attribute in the html code so on click means when the click event is generated by this input element then call this function say hello and this function just generates a pop-up there okay so we can tr try to do that with our image for example so let's remove this uh, alerts and we define a function uh, rooster clicked and this function just writes alerts and alert with ouch So every time I click on the rooster, it will open an alert. Rooster clicked is the name of the function. I can, on the image of the rooster, which is here, image tag, there is the source attribute, I can add a new on click. You see that on when you write on it shows me all the possible event handlers that I can register on this element on click is the one on blur and uh, on focus are also also interesting on mouse uh, on key down key up key press mouse enter mouse leave so when the mouse goes onto the image, when the mouse goes outside of the image, on mouse move, if the mouse moves while it's still on top of the image. So you have all the details. Hmm? So in this case, we just do a simple click. And here, <coughs> you can write the JavaScript functions to be called. In this case, it's uh, uh, called uh, rooster clicked hmm? the editor knows that I include in script.js so it does completion of the functions in script so let's try to reload this application And I can do whatever I want, but if I click on the rooster, what happens? Why doesn't that? Ah, okay, sorry. I am, I have two running. Okay, this one. Okay. If I click on it, I get an alert window. I dismiss it, I click again, I get another window and so on. If I click somewhere else, it doesn't happen, of course. Only clicks inside this, the box, remember the box model, the box corresponding to this uh, image. Hmm. So if you look at we, what we wrote in the index page, due in the head, we included a script this script didn't execute anything there's nothing here except the definition of a function 
this function is not executed now it's just defined there I can define 1 2 17 functions they will just get stored away but not executed so when I li uh, load the script I'm not doing anything really except defining some functions for later first step I define the functions I don't do anything I don't do any action second step I assign some event handlers to some function so I decide what will what, ne what I need to be the, the behavior of a given element when the user does some kind of action on them and this happens while we load the page after the page is loaded these event handlers are are ready are charged and they will be triggered when the user does the specification if the user does the, specific the specification hmm? and what can these functions do well they can do an alert but it's not very useful what the interesting part is these functions can access the content of the page but we don't want to access the content of a page like this like a very long string theoretically we could but it's a very bad way if I want uh, for example to know what the user typed in this field I should find the input at line 35 and find whether we have a value attribute that represents the current value of the element it's uh, is not dealing with an HTML page as a string it's uh, what I would not suggest to my worst enemy enemy no? because uh, if, you, if you change anything in this page then all your functions will break we want to have a more direct more high level access to the, the elements of the page and we can do that with this uh, DOM interface that we were speaking about before and the DOM is uh, a set of uh, standard interfaces that presents an HTML document that by itself is a string as a structure of nodes, a nested structure of a tree containing many nodes. And every node corresponds to an element or to an attribute of the page. So an HTML page is, is uh, decomposed is analyzed by the browser and decomposed in a set of uh, its elements the HTML element contains head and body and the body contains uh, a link the link contains an attribute and the text inside and so on and the browser <coughs> will show you this because uh, you have a uh, where is that no way this element wow Let me move to Chrome because I know okay. You, we have uh, this body element or the HTML element that contains uh, some children the first child is the head element 
the last child is a body element and the children nodes are the head and the body and the body is here contains uh, children that are basically a div container this is the structure of the html page the div container contains i'm just navigating the children attribute contains uh, five elements uh, h1 p p that contains the image a form and the footer the p that contains the image has uh, children the image itself has only one child the image itself the image doesn't have any children child elements count zero children is empty but does have some attributes for example it has uh, the source attribute which is uh, source which is the address of the image so we are we, we may navigate all the html page with these uh, three of objects the object model so everything is represented as an object and uh, every object like EM, emg img the image is an object with uh, a very long list uh, of attributes of properties like we said before in javascript the objects may have many properties some of them are just uh, text like the the source it's a string some of these attributes could be objects themselves so for example children is an array of objects that will be other nodes in the page and so on this uh, set of uh, objects and uh, attributes and properties is directly accessible and visible to the javascript code so in javascript i could pick one of these elements and modify it in some way and change some properties add some objects remove some objects modify some text and then will be immediately uh, changed on the html page hmm? so for example uh, what could i do okay but this is just a description of the dom structure that we saw interactively and uh, and some properties all of this uh, is accessible as i said uh, in javascript and so there are <coughs> javascript methods and javascript properties corresponding to all the properties in the dom element the html element, element so with the same name so it's very easy to match and the, the interesting part is that, uh, that any modification to the objects in javascript is immediately reflected into the html page and all the three starts uh, so the html tag starts from from a predefined variable that is called document hmm? so we have a document object from which everything starts and uh, imagine that we want uh, i don't know when we click on the rooster instead of writing the alert uh, we want to i don't know change the color of this text it's not very useful but at least we can see okay if i click on the rooster then we welcome to my project becomes red this is what we want to achieve so first of all when we click on the on the when we click on the rooster part uh, we already solved it because it's already in the attached uh, event handler here the rooster clicked uh, now just needs uh, the function rooster click just need to change the color of a paragraph of text okay first of all we need to find the object the object that correspond to the paragraph of text uh, it could be probably document dot uh, children 
the, the first was the uh, head and the second is the body and then we have a div and zero is the first one and inside this div uh, we have uh, uh, the h1 and the p so it's the second so the paragraph is uh, can be found by navigating the document and finding the right way through the children of course we don't want to do that it's totally unreadable and totally fragile because if you just add one paragraph somewhere everything breaks okay so we need a better way of finding uh, the node that corresponding to that specific paragraph that we want but we already know so, a way of identifying a specific uh, component in the html page that is the id attribute id subtitle so we can attach an id to the element and use a search function in the javascript code that is called find element or search element sorry search no get element then i'll show you why i don't remember it get element by id the id was uh, subtitle so i'm asking the document which is the top object please find beyond your tree a node whose id has been set to subtitle we are doing that with css with the hashtag we can do that in javascript with the get element by id function and then we can now we have p we can change the color attribute to red let's see if it works reload the application okay reload the page click here not working let's see why uh, the let's put a breakpoint here try to click okay we have inside the browser we have a debugger so we can open the debugger in the browser try to interact uh, we don't you, you don't use pychamps anymore because now pychamps we have uh, runs the, the flask application but every file the html and javascript has already been served so flask is doing nothing right now only the browser is working so right now i set up breakpoint here just to see what happens uh, step over p is a variable actually is uh, uh, what is p is actually this paragraph yes and the color right attribute no sorry in, uh, why does it say red because I, I haven't executed the instruction yet the beginning because it's a second time here so i execute the instruction i click p is undefined i execute the get element and it finds me the right p okay it doesn't have any color attributes here so my fault uh, i didn't remember that
yeah i need to i would need to create a new attribute uh, as, and set it as a child of the p attributes uh, yeah it, I think it can be set immediately like that i could use the style attribute i could do like that modify style okay so my mistake uh, i try to use an attribute color which is not defined uh, as an attribute of the node p so i could add the new attribute node and link it but it's complex or use a shortcut which is the style element, uh, style attribute which is the way of uh, applying inline css styles and we write it in the css syntax so I'm changing the CSS attributes of that node. Okay. So. Yes, we are overwriting the not the CSS property in general, only the inline styles if that element had one. Okay. So right now, this element doesn't have any style attribute. It can inherit some CSS style, of course. Now we are adding a new inline style that will uh, cascade uh, with, the, with all the others, OK? So the reason why I'm, I'm making all these mistakes and I don't remember the functions and so on is because working directly with the DOM is quite heavy. Because even adding an attribute uh, requires two or three statements, uh, and finding a node is very, you can also, you only have two functions get element by ID and get element by name. But then they will find all the P's, all the divs, uh, all the images, and so on. And uh, this is what, so the, the, um, the workflow is clear, in which we have an HTML object that generates, after a user action, generates an event. A function is called. What does this function do? Usually, this function needs to find some objects, a paragraph to modify, a text input uh, to check the contents, read some properties of these objects, read the current text that the user wrote, check whether a checkbox is set or not, and then possibly modify some object property okay so this is the workflow for 90 percent uh, of the javascript code all event driven programming these three actions finding objects reading properties and modifying properties is a bit complex if i work directly with the dom interface the dom is very nice because it gives me access to everything but it's a very low level interface that is why people usually use uh, higher level libraries like the jquery library that we'll uh, see next week uh, that will make match finding objects and uh, changing object properties really quick especially when we need to read or change uh, many objects at the same time okay but i don't want to anticipate anything uh, just to say that these kind of instructions working directly with DOM elements uh, mm, are very seldom used. Uh, usually we use jQuery function that makes them, well, I, I say that they give the superpowers to the DOM. Mm, because all these objects will have a ma ma many more methods, much more f powerful. Mm. So we'll give you some uh, uh, reading, some a link to some easy tutorial on for having some initial idea about jquery uh, to read in the next days uh, and then on uh, on th next thursday we start converting things and programming actually in jquery and not just in plain javascript okay so thank you for today